Hey folks, welcome to MoGraph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to Redshift for 3ds Max. It's a massive 13 hours course in which we explore all the aspects of Redshift for Max thoroughly. Make sure to check it out, the link is in the description. Also be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Let's start with plastics, create a new Redshift material. Assign it to the shader ball and start IPR. For plastic shaders, diffuse color is the most important component and contributor to the final look. Let's use this yellowish-orange color with the RGB values of 232, 125, and 2. Now coming down to the reflection section, I mentioned in the reflection lesson that for most materials and shaders, you can safely keep the reflection weight and color at 1 and white to keep the shader as physically accurate as possible. In the past we used to control reflection weight and reflection color and reflection roughness and then define very specific IOR values for each shader, just forget that. In this new approach, reflection weight is almost always 1, reflection color is just a simple white, and the IOR value for most daily shaders like plastic, wood, concrete and so on can be around 1.5. The only thing we are interested in is the reflection roughness. We add variation to the reflection roughness with a grayscale texture and that adds all the realism we need. I know Redshift material is not quite ready for this approach yet, but hopefully it will be in near future. So add an RS bitmap node and load this PW1 texture. Let's add a surface material as well in case we needed to see a texture on the shader ball. Assign the surface material and connect the texture to its map input. Set its tiling to 2 and 2. As this map will be connected to the reflection roughness, also make sure the color space is set to raw as we are in ACES and this is a data input. If we connect this map to the reflection roughness, as we learned before those dark patches will make the surface sharper at those areas. We want the opposite, so let's invert the image. A quick way to do it is going to be by using a color invert node, so let's add one. We want to add this node after the texture. Now the texture values are inverted, and finally let's add an output node after the color invert. and connect the output node to the reflection roughness input. Then assign the redshift material again. I use the output node to be able to adjust the texture values. As soon as we add this variation to the reflection roughness, now we get a much more realistic shader. The map is a tad contrasty and I'm looking for something more subtle. Select the output map, I'm going to select the darkest values and increase them to something like 0.12. Now the sharper reflections become a bit rougher, then I'm going to select the brightest values of my texture, which are responsible for these rough patches, and set them to around 0.6. Now they become sharper. Let's assign the surface material again and take a look at how the original map has changed. So this is the map after the invert node. And this is it after we adjusted its values using the output node. We just made the darker values a bit brighter to make the sharpest parts a bit rougher. And we also made the brighter parts quite darker to make the rougher parts much sharper. And that is the shader we get. In terms of importance of components for plastic shader or anything similar, now we need to work on the subsurface scattering. So let's come down to subsurface multiple scattering section of the material. Set the weight to around 0.8. Depending on the particular plastic, the SSS amount can be quite low or high. You need to look at your reference image and see if it has a lot of SSS or not, and then decide on the amount. Set the scale radius to 8.
For the SSS color, we will use the same diffuse color as well. And this really adds quite a lot to the overall realism of the shader, beautiful. The next thing to consider is to work on the bump mapping. For most surfaces, you need an overall unevenness that can be achieved with a simple noise, and then more high-frequency detail which you can just reuse the reflection roughness map for it. So add a bump map node. Should we use the original map or the inverted version? If I assign the surface material, and connect the color invert node to its map input, We know that these white patches are making the reflection rougher and the dark patches are making the surface sharper. If we consider bump map, the white patches will add bump and the dark patches will add indent, and that's what we want. So connect the color invert node to the texture input of the bump map node. And connect the bump node to the bump input of the redshift material. And assign the material to the mesh again. The bump amount is too much. Let's try 0.05. Still too much. Let's try 0.01. Bump mapping can be a bit tricky, so when I add bump mapping, I tend to scale up the render to see what is happening. So let me draw a region by shift dragging in the render view. In the render settings, increase the resolution to 1600 by 1600. And take a final render. Now we will be able to see more detail. Now you see even 0.01 is too much for a fairly smooth plastic surface. Let's go for 0.003 and take another render. That's good. We don't want to exaggerate anything. Subtle and little is always better. So that's the high frequency detail. Let's disable the region and start IPR again. Now let's quickly add the general unevenness to the surface using a noise node. Most of the materials and surfaces surrounding us in real life are not made perfectly, they are not going to be perfectly smooth, there is some sort of waviness to them, and if you take a look at any reflective surface around you, you can see that overall waviness, unevenness to them. So add a max and noise node. Connected to the map input of the surface material. and assign the surface material to the shader ball. Set its overall scale to around 90. Now assign the material to the shader ball again. Connect the noise map to a bump node. Add a bump blender. Connect the first bump map to his base input. and connect the noise bump map to its bump input zero. Then connect the bump blender to the bump input of the redshift material instead. And in the bump blender, just increase the layer zero bump weight to around 0 0.5, so we can increase the contribution of the noise bump. Now if I increase the height scale in the new bump map node to something like 5, That's the type of unevenness that I was talking about, but we want to be subtle here, so let's set the bump height to around 0.6. Now let's see what we get. This is a pretty good plastic shader and you can call it a day. One last thing that you can add to your shader to make it more realistic is to make the perpendicular faces a bit sharper compared to the parallel faces to the view and direction. We can do that simply using the coat section of the shader, we talked about this specific topic in the coding lesson.
For now let's set the coding weight to around 0.3 and code IOR to around 1.2. So it will be limited to only the perpendicular faces and roughness to 0.05. And this will add another level of realism to the overall shader. We can go ahead and add a bit of variation to the coat roughness as well, but this is enough for now. The good thing is the whole shader is being controlled by one texture that is connected to both the reflection roughness and bump input. If you load another texture, you would get an entirely different look. Let me show you the final render for this yellow plastic shader. Here it is, very nice and realistic. Let's quickly turn this into a red plastic shader. Duplicate the whole shader and assign it. Now we just need to change the vase color and the SSS color to any color we want. Let's go for a red color with the RGB values of 180, 5 and 4. and copy the same color to the SSS color. I think the roughness map can be adjusted a bit. I just want to make these rougher parts a bit sharper. So select the output node and decrease the Y value for the second point to something like 0.5. Let's see what we get. And that's our red plastic shader. Let me show you the final render for this shader as well. Very touchable and nice. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com or our Gumroad page at gumroad.com slash mographplus and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Corona, V-Ray, Redshift, Octane and so on. See you in the next video.